Hickok 45 here. We're going to talk about the M&P FPC folding carbine today, but I don't have one. Oh, yes, I do. Look at here. It's still in the package. Let's open it up and fire this thing. Get better get my ears in, I guess. Oh, yeah. Safety off. Boom. <laughs> we unfolded it. Pretty nice. Let's hit a ram over there. Oh, how about a buffalo? Yeah, how about a turkey on the top row? Well, thought I missed. Okay. <laughs> oh man, this thing is really shootable. Right, Mr. Watermelon? No, let's save uh, him for a hollow point, see if it makes any difference. <laughs> uh, what if I get that cinder piece of a cinder block over there? I think we did. Oh, I got a terrible stance here. I'm acting like I, it doesn't matter. And sometimes it doesn't. So yeah, the, the uh, FPC folding pistol carbine right from m and uh, otherwise known as Smith & Wesson right so this is it it folds we're empty can fold it the bolt back I think or the bolt closed oh uh, here's a job to get that bolt uh, I'm gonna take the mag out biggest negative is the uh, bolt release bolt lock biggest negative of the gun so yeah it opens up there you got the chamber probably safe right I'll bet there's nothing in there I bet you can look right through that barrel right <laughs> so it, it goes against our nature to some extent if we're safety conscious to have barrels pointing around and swinging around like that but once it's broken loose probably not gonna fire you know even if somehow you get a round in that right and I I did some experimenting as you recall in the Sunday morning uh, video with uh, I went ahead and carefully had a round in the chamber just to see what would happen and uh, just to see and it, it wouldn't wouldn't open which makes sense right uh, i didn't want to force it anyway because you have the i guess the extractor hold of the round it's in the channel that sort of thing so but anyway as long as you don't have a round in the chamber you, know, you can you can fold it around and as soon as you start folding it uh, i mean you're folding that uh, chamber away from the bolt and everything of course there's no round there so it's, it's just like totally safe you know, beyond safe right all right information on these and uh been asking us when we're we gonna get one well we wait till they're out and uh we uh, tend well, we don't tend we don't help promote pro promote things when they come out but i wanted to uh to see what i thought of it you all wanted us to see what we thought of it and just check it out because uh, you know I like pistol caliber carbines in general they're just a lot of fun to shoot whether it's a western uh, lever action you know one of the original pistol caliber carbines uh, I don't know I guess 1873 could you call that a carbine there were shorter versions of it and it's a pistol caliber 4440 you know and of course the model 92 Winchester one of the most popular of all time uh, basically a pistol caliber carbine if it's in carbine length and most of those were relatively short I think so so pistol caliber carbine is not a new concept really but uh, they're just a lot of fun and uh, so yeah I appreciate you and uh, I'm gonna shoot this thing so I'm because I really enjoy shooting it I do it's a it's a fun plinker it really is you might look at it as a, I don't know, a combat weapon <laughs> a tactical firearm which it could be I guess uh, one of the things about it, I, I don't look at firearms like this, uh, and, and people look at it differently. My perception of the fact that it folds is mainly as a convenience in, I don't know, packing it and transporting it more than anything. I don't see that as some huge advantage. Wow, I've got a tactical firearm I can swing open and be in action in no time. I don't know. They, they've got these things called handguns. They're a little bit quicker than that and handier than that you know but but I mean there might be a reason for that and of course you get this thing that comes with it ah, woo, there goes all the accoutrements on the table sorry talon grips and battle song uh, so 
got it pointed at me again, but it's folded up, so you know it's kind of a weird thing there. So that's pretty neat. And again, uh, there's a strap in here for it, so you could carry that around. And it, the biggest advantage, I think, in a folding gun, it's like a shotgun. You break it down, and you can get it in a pack like this, put it on your shoulder, and it does not scare people as much. It doesn't scream, "Gun!" And that's one of the advantages. Let's be honest, and we're not that. Uh, in a subversive way, like you're up to something necessarily. You might be, I don't know you, but people who see you aren't frightened, you know. Uh, they're not triggered, oh no, a firearm necessarily. So, so there's some advantages and then packing it and not taking up as much room and all that. It, that to me, that's one of the biggest advantages of that, okay? Uh, reducing the length on a firearm. Now it opens up, it just friction, you just pop it. See, it's catching on the charging handle here, that's what it does. And now that might wear because that's kind of polymer against polymer. I don't know, uh, but you can pull forward on that and then you know rather than you know, even when you close it, you could do that if you were worried about that. I guess okay. All right. So that's kind of how it folds up. I will say uh, when I first saw these, I don't know, shot show or NRA meeting, I I didn't handle it and mess with it. I don't guess much, but I okay. Is that a gimmick or what? You know, we'll look at that sometime. And, I, you know, you can't help but wonder, okay, it's kind of odd looking, folds up as, you know, and maybe that's its claim to fame. It's a uh, piece of junk, but it does fold up. Okay, that's a little extreme, I guess. From Smith & Wesson m and it should not be junk, right? Uh, but, uh, but anyway, I was ready for anything. But a friend of mine bought one on her trip to Alabama uh, down to... Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Forgot the name of the shop. Anyway, Amber, fame, the famous Amber, where she were. <laughs> and uh, that's what he bought when we were down there in Alabama a few weeks back. He was looking for one, and uh, something armory. Sorry about that, uh, folks. But uh, uh, and he likes it. I went up to his place. He has a lot of land, and we fired the thing. Fired it a lot. And uh, I told him we were you know, in the process of getting one to, to do a video with and everything. And I, I fired his a good, a good amount. And I, I was pretty impressed with it. The thing is, it folds up and it opens up and does all that stuff. But it feels really solid. A lot of polymer. That's polymer. You know, the, the rail, all that is polymer. Uh, this is aluminum back here. But... It feels very uh, sturdy. You don't get the feeling it's just cheaply made, okay? And that's that's big, that's a big. Nobody wants a cheap feeling gun or a cheap gun that's just not put together well. Now, I don't know, we may hear they're all starting to fail, you know, after 500 rounds, but I don't think that's the case yet. Uh, they've been out there a while, people have been shooting them, and it seems really solid. I kind of like it, it's, it's fun, fun to shoot. Can I shoot some more? Comes with, uh, uh, what's this, a 17 round mag, I think. And then two, yeah, here they are. <laughs> two 23 round mags in there, in the buttstock here. Now this is kind of a weird configuration right here. You push on this one and it releases that one. You push on the other side, it releases this one. Or you could just, I guess, pull up on this. It's kind of weird. Uh, if I have it standing like against something resting, and I reach down for the gun, I seem like I, I grab the stock and I invariably release the mags and they start falling out. There's something to be aware of. So I don't know if that's the best idea, but it, it does hold it firmly if you don't uh, inadvertently hit the button there, okay? They do, it's not like they're gonna just fall out on you unless you do something. Uh, and I don't know, again, just like unfolding it and going into action real quick. I don't know that you're gonna pick it up or you're gonna get that ammo out real quick, you know, in a, in a speedy tenth of a second. Or, you know, I, I just don't view it like that, but it is nice to have it good and secure. And just make sure you have plenty of time to get the mag out, okay? Let's take one of them out and shoot a couple more rounds. Got this funky sleeve on here too that's loose. Uh, that's a bit weird, okay? But it works, it works. All right, I've got a prism scope on here. This is a primary arm. I put that on there. That doesn't come with a firearm. There's no uh, sights on it when you buy it. And it runs around 650, maybe 600, I think. Depends on, I guess, where you find it. Um, Alabama Holster, great company, great company. And I'm gonna reach out to the gong again.
How about the cowboy? Yeah. How about a two liter? <laughs> Are we empty already? Wow. 20 or 23 rounds, however many I had in there. It doesn't take long, does it? And it does take the Smith & Wesson there are your magazines because uh, it is a pistol there. You got a Smith & Wesson pistol there in your hand basically, right? So it takes all those same magazines. You might have some. Uh, what else about it? Trigger's pretty nice. I like the trigger. Uh, it's a nice trigger. It's threaded barrel. Got whatever, melanite, you know, uh, finish and all that sort of thing. It's 16 and a quarter inch barrel, I think. Folds up to about 16 and a half inches. The stock is not adjustable, if it looks like it, it's not. Um, blowback operation, as you know, most, I guess you could say, of the nine millimeter carbines are like this. And uh, feels solid um, at the price. I think everything else you're dying to know about it like that. Your charging handle is right here. It's kind of interesting, you know, kind of like an AR in some ways. Isn't it? Now you can sort of grab one side of it and eh, probably it's going to work, not pinch. You know, it's easier for me to just grab it with both fingers like that. The biggest weakness, uh, the <laughs> the lock, the slide lock, bolt lock, whatever. I mean, it's, it's weird. You could really catch your finger in there. And I, let's see, I I couldn't get, like on this side, I couldn't get that to release. You can't get it. If you can get a fingernail in there, you might be able to do it. But you got to work at that. And same over here. You could get it to release, but it's probably going to catch your thumb. Instead of M1 Grand Thumb, you got whatever, M&P, uh, FPC Thumb. <laughs> so I don't even want to release this. I've just been come back here and release it like that. That's maybe the biggest uh, negative, I think, of the firearm. All right? So... Let me uh, let me shoot him. Yeah, we got ammo right here. And see how this works? You push on that, and it releases that. Okay, you pop it in there. I have to say, it's good and uh, solid. It's really in there. It's not going to fall out on you unless you touch this. And it's definitely going to fall out. It doesn't take much uh, at all. All right, so I don't know. That that's just the way it is. Uh, for six six hundred fifty bucks, I guess it's it's a pretty. Pretty nice little piece, and again, it just feels solid. Doesn't come with a sight. I, I told you all Sunday Sunday morning video. I had a, a lot of fun putting a sight on it. I tried to get. Uh, I had to go through two different of my aim points. One didn't have a riser on. I forgot. I needed that. It takes an AR height riser on your your sight if you're going to use something like this. So I go to another AR, rob the aim point off of it, and. It's dead. I put a new battery, two new batteries, it wouldn't work. So I've got a uh, aim point that has died on me. I never had that happen before. It's just something wrong with it. I sent it back, I guess. Or hit it with a hammer, see if I can fix it. Uh, so I just went and got my prism uh, sight that I ordered not all that long ago. I don't know if y'all have even seen this other than the Sunday morning video. But I kind of like that. Y'all were right. Y'all recommended these to me because of, uh, you know, John and I both have that issue with red dots. We got enough astigmatism that that red dot gets kind of squirrely on us, you know? And uh, you all uh, clued me into the prism sights and I've been meaning to get one. So I went ahead and got one and I kind of like it. It's got a weird, a little bit of a weird reticle. It's a uh, primary arms, but I, I like it. I really do. I'm, I'm not lying. Oh yeah, there's that mag. Let's we'll shoot that. Okay, let's get it out. We're in combat. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah, these are fun. These are fun. The, even if it didn't fold, I would, I would like it. Uh, again, I'm not sure how important the folding capability is for me. All right. It's neat. I took this off my LWRC 68, popped it on here, and I said, "Okay, some ammo. Let me go out and sight it in." And it was 
So I didn't have to do anything. It sided in. Isn't that amazing? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> Pretty neat. So now again, it doesn't come with a uh, optical sight. Optics. That's that's mine. Or the suppressor. Okay. The Banish 45. I stuck on there. This is 150 grain ammo. I think so. Works better with the suppressor. I, I try this out. It, it seems to, to to operate okay. Sometimes you don't know. You put a suppressor on. You get some more subsonic ammo. It's not as fast or heavier, lighter, whatever. And uh, the firearm is not set up for it, uh, especially some handguns have encountered that. It won't function as reliably, but I, this seems to do okay. And uh, now you're not going to stick a bigger suppressor. If uh, concealment capability, look at that yellow jacket. Boy, he's playing with fire. Uh, if that's really important to you, making it as small as you can, you maybe having a suppressor on, not something you would <laughs> leave on there, which you probably wouldn't anyway. Let's just try this for fun, since we can, right? And I showed you this, you had your mags, I think it came in here. And then, let's see, I think there's a, a little, yeah, you got extra grips. Yeah, I'm glad I saw those. Yeah, so you can uh, modify the grip on the, the Smith & Wesson grip there, the M&P. And then I think there's a, a shoulder strap in here, yeah, yeah, for, for the bag. And then the firearm, you fold it up and it, you know, strap it down right there. So pretty nice little carry bag, yeah. You can just pretend that's your dirty laundry or something. All right. And again, it really does seem to lock up solidly. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a, a problems getting it to lock up that I've noticed at all. Uh, now this, you don't push on. It looks like it should, but you just, I don't know. You could, I guess ideally you could just flip that with your finger. Oh, okay. You can. I didn't think I could. <laughs> if you have a strong enough finger, you can do that. I tend to hit my thumb on it. So, I don't know. So far, it seems pretty cool. Yeah, all right. Let's try this just for fun. Yeah, these are these are fun little guns to shoot. Uh, hopefully, you still don't have a mental block. If you did, against pistol caliber carbines, what is your problem? Oh, I forgot I was going to do something. Oh, we didn't smoke any pot. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's uh, let's sneak over there. Maybe that uh, cinder block. What's left of it? Uh, uh. Pretty cool. <laughs> a little bit of a delay there, huh? Boop. Yeah, easier on the ears. What about that? Last round on the ram. One thing I did not do, you almost let me forget. Who's got some hollow? Let's, uh, let's put a underwood hollow point in here. Probably don't need more than one or two. I'll put about three, four. All right. Let's address Mr. Watermelon. Not shot too many watermelons this year yet. These are pretty warm. Okay. Now it is nine millimeter, so you know it's not like we're shooting it with a AR-15. But uh, it will. whatever it does, that's what it does. And again, this is a big negative. Like right now, normally I would just uh, put my thumb and work the bolt, release the bolt, but I just really can't do it. I can do that though. All right. Oh wow! <laughs> and one shot's all I needed, right? Oh, too bad. I've got to fire three more times. So sad. What we got here? It would about have to be a bad round. Either that or it didn't pick one up. So, I'll get the mag out. We'll dump it out in the ground. <laughs> okay. Well, that's locked up, didn't you? Probably don't want to open it, you know. So, or even try. Let me put more pressure on it. 
a good handle on it. Let's see, so we had to click. So we have a, uh, could have been a hang fire, right? You gotta think through this. Could have been a hang fire. Uh, this is a bad primer, something like that. So should have been long enough. The police even knew about it. Here they come. Uh, so it should have been long enough now. Let's uh, put a little more force on that bolt. There we go. Nothing in the chamber. Now here comes the chore of locking that you know, bolt back. Okay. And one advantage of having a folding carbine is we can just look down that barrel and we see nothing in there. There's no uh, squib load. And I think I lost track of the... Oh, there it is. All right. So we just had a light primer strike. Okay. A little bit of a... You see kind of a half moon on that maybe. Just a little bit of a light strike. Okay. So let's, let's shoot the last one. So whatever that was about, uh, sometimes you never know, do you? We've got one more though. Just glad we got it out. All right. All right. One more round on the gong. Wow! The big dummy hit the gong. Oh, isn't he good? Okay. Fast forward about three days, I guess. Since I hit the gong, you can probably tell I'm maybe I'm wearing something different. I don't know. I don't have my ear uh, plugs in. <laughs> All right, so uh, we finished the video. Uh, you know, you saw the trouble we're having with the uh, particular round. Finished the video, and uh, <laughs> I know y'all love to see me putzing around and uh, having malfunctions and looking for the brass and trying to figure out what's going wrong and all that kind of thing as has happened quite often you know whatever happens in a video kind of happens right so uh, anyway let me tell you a story so we finished the video it gosh when it was 30 minutes I guess just messing around trying to figure things out and went in signed off and I rendered it to, to post and I got to thinking later at night uh, you know I've got a good friend with one of these, and uh, he has you know, fired his a lot. I fired his, I think I maybe mentioned that in the video or in Sunday's video. And it'd be interesting to know if uh, how his handles this particular uh, uh, round from uh, Underwood, you know, if, if he has trouble with his. Because I've not had any, not had any difficulties with uh, the Underwood 9mm in any of my pistols. Uh, and so I thought, you know, uh, I wonder if I could get him some of that and before we do a chapter two video and you know, et cetera, et cetera, and I'll do it. We'll do another video with it. Uh, see if we can figure out a little bit here. And uh, and then I thought, well, you know what? Uh, so I texted him and he was coming through this part of Tennessee town. He lives about an hour from me the next day for a doctor's appointment in Nashville. And he said, yeah, I can stop by and bring my gun. I said, great, great. So he did and we fired his gun. Uh, with the ammo pretty cool, huh? And uh, His gun was clean Me and mine was dirty by the time I was firing that ammo, but I was, So what you know what it was doing who knows that that shouldn't made a, a difference because it seemed like the round uh, Y'all didn't see all of it, but it seemed like we had three maybe two or three times it did that it, you know, click He's barely getting a primer strike and it was I think one of them didn't even get a strike. I don't think it touched the primer, that kind of thing. So to me, it seemed like the round was seating a little too deeply, okay? And, uh, but all my handguns just worked fine. You see me shoot it, man, videos, Sunday morning videos, whatever, variety of nine millimeters. And uh, of course, we all know Underwood makes great ammo. So uh, we shot it in his first thing when he got here put a magazine, full mag in of, uh, you know, the, whatever, the 17 round mag. And on about the sixth or seventh shot, it did the same thing with a perfectly clean, you know, chamber and everything. And uh, so, okay, that's good. Didn't need to shoot a lot. So that, uh, and then he, he fired a bunch since he was here on this 
great range. He has a nice range too. Uh, fired a bunch more times with no trouble with other ammo. And uh, the same thing we did in this video <laughs> that I, I cut out, because again, it made it so long, but one of the things I did at the end of this video, it sounds weird, doesn't it? The, what this video was going to be, uh, I, I fired uh, three different brands of ammo after we had the difficulty you know, with the Underwood and you know, shot fine like it's been doing, just fine. So there's something about that ammo. And it did it not only in this one, but in his FPC, okay? So, being the genius I am, I, I right now I'm, I'm assuming that it could be they give that ammo a little tighter crimp. It doesn't create a problem, except in this gun. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. Just, I mean, just a hair tighter crimp maybe than some of the other 9mm or most 9mm loadings. I don't know. And in addition to that, maybe. It's just conjecture. Maybe the chambers on the FPC are just a hair larger in diameter, or the uh, where the case mouth uh, of a nine millimeter round uh, head spaces where it hits, you know, where the chamber ends, you know, the, the case hits the uh, chamber mouth. Maybe on these guns, it's not as sharp. And if a round isn't crimped exactly the way they want it, you, know, so you get a couple of things that maybe add to kind of a perfect storm, a couple of things combined. And then maybe also with the heavy bolt that is blowback, slamming it into that chamber, that maybe it can go just a hair too far into the chamber. Because every time it happens, including in his, his gun was even it was cleaner than mine. Uh, it, it was hard to really put a lot of pressure on the, the bolt to get that to get it out to to extract the round that did not fire. Okay, so it seems to me it's just going in a little too far. All right, I don't know. So whatever. Uh, and there was something else. Oh yeah. And then also, I, I just wanted to do a little. That's why I'm tacking this on to the end of this video. I also the very next day, I guess it was. No, it was the day that he came in. I, I came out. You know, early with my gun, knowing he'd be showing up in about an hour or so. And I fired uh, a variety of, of ammo, and that ammo, some more of that, and I could not get it to do it again. <laughs> Go figure, isn't that the way it goes? It's like when your car won't start and you take it to the shop, finally get it started, and then it won't, won't do what you were complaining about, or the, the problem goes away or something you know, temporarily. So anyway, I couldn't get to do it again like that. Uh, day before yesterday when it was day yesterday uh, yeah so that's the way it goes with these things isn't it so uh, but his did that same thing so it's a combination of that ammo and this rifle because that ammo works great and everything else the other thing I did the same day I got this back out and my buddy came by was I dragged out three different nine millimeter pistols I hadn't fired in a while got them dirty just for you all or just for this test <laughs> Uh, the SIG uh, M17, a Glock 19, and something else, I think a P365, whatever. I, and I fired that uh, uh, Underwood ammo in all of them. These were firearms I think I hadn't tried it in. It works fine, you know. So something about the chamber on these babies that's just uh, close to not being exactly right for, for that ammo. That's what it looks like. I'll keep you posted on it, you know, whatever. Findings. I, I've talked to the folks at Underwood, and I don't know who to talk to at Smith and Wesson. But uh, you know, you know, it's, that's not my job to 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 uh, be a scientist necessarily. But anyway, uh, I, I'm a I'm a uh, kind of a redneck scientist, so I, I did whatever experimentation probably I'm going to do. Okay, I got out guns and tried other ammo, and that ammo and those guns, and everything worked just fine. I found I got a hold of another one of these my buddy had, and to see if it would uh, duplicate that sort of thing, you know, in his, and it did. And so anyway, now it's up to Underwood Ammo and Smith & Wesson to figure that out. <laughs> I've done my part for the cause. So, uh, but you know, these things just seem to run everything. I, I like them, I really do. And as I said, uh, maybe I cut that out too. I didn't really uh, like intentionally cut anything out necessarily, oh, I don't want them to see that other than just so much bumbling around trying to figure it out because we don't edit anything and I was going to post it but when I when I 
did the further experimentation I got my buddy's gun and all that okay I got to share that with them let's not wait till the chapter two video let's just go ahead and put it in into this video and I thought well I'll just put it after like we do sometime after the sign off life is good and say oh by the way I got some information to add well, I want to cut out some of that stupid part that made it 30 minutes, you know, where it should have been about 23 or 4 minutes. And so now it's 30 minutes again. <laughs> but it would have been 40. So anyway, I just I just stopped it where it had, to, I think, the first malfunction with it. And, uh, and then here I am explaining it, at least what I know about it. So anyway, that's all I know. That's not a lot. Uh, but since it did malfunction... And I was able to do further experimentation and, like I said, get another one and see if it did it with that one. Uh, and I was fortunate to have that opportunity. I thought, oh, let's, uh, let's just back up in time and uh, record a couple of minutes and put it on the end of this video. So you'll know right away. As soon as you see the video, as soon as it malfunctions, right, you're going to get this as a follow-up. You don't have to wait for Chapter 2. But we've... I, don't, I like this thing. It's borrowed from Bud's. We may do a chapter two with it and shoot us some more. Okay, and if I find out anything further, I will share it in that video. Okay, so as usual, really appreciate your support and uh, you know, coming out to see what silliness we're up to. And, uh, you know, even with an occasional malfunction, well, before I say that, again, let me remind you. <laughs> You always want to be sure your firearm uh, likes whatever ammo you're going to, I guess, fire in it the most, or especially you're going to depend on, maybe hunting or for self-defense, okay? Uh, if, it's a, if it's going to play any kind of self-defense role, now I don't mean you're in engagement every day, but, you know, it's going to be in a position uh, where it, it could be used for that okay whatever ammo you're going to rely on you want you want to test it because lots of guns are finicky with certain brands right we've all most of us have discovered that with semi-automatics at least right so so be aware of that and uh, that's just uh, always something to to remember with any firearm 22 long rifles are the worst i guess but uh, you know you can have other firearms that uh, might not like some specific brand bullet configuration uh case i don't know you know whatever that might be so anyway even with an occasional malfunction as i was about to say life is good 